A few years ago, my husband and I turned on to the minimalist lifestyle. That is, if you don't know, retain a base minimum of belongings, and don't over-encumber yourself or your home with excessive amounts of stuff. We were knick-knack types, collectors of whatever we thought was cool or even unique. Each windowsill in our house had different charms or minerals on display. No surface went undecorated the entire time that we were together, up until the introduction of this whole minimalism idea. Once we learned about it, we started selling all kinds of stuff. Facebook Marketplace became a passive form of income for us, but we still weren't fully satisfied. After the first year, all the knickknacks and small collections were gone, but we still felt like our house had way too much stuff. I sold a bunch of my crafts gear that I wasn't using anymore. My husband sold off tools and outdoor gear that he never used. We started to plan out what we were going to do with all the money that we saved as well. It was only like $500, but at the rate we were going, it would turn into a nice little chunk of change, more than enough to take some kind of nice vacation. We wanted to empty out even more of our belongings, to see if we could get the money pile up to a grand. I was starting to sell some of my collector items, like antique chinaware, paintings, and things I had largely considered just extra. My husband was on a mission to move his big 11-piece pearl drum kit. He played a bit in college. It was just one jam band that maybe had a half a dozen shows throughout his life. But for some reason, he always held on to that drum set. In the back of his mind, he always wanted to come back to it. But now, ten years had gone by, and he hadn't so much as even picked up a stick during that whole hiatus. He realized that that drum kit was really just a dream, and was something that needed to go. We came up with a fair price, and added it to our ever-evolving Facebook Marketplace offering. It was the highest mark item at the time, and was going to make more than double the amount of savings that we accumulated. We started to get some bites, but they were mostly just offers that my husband wasn't interested in entertaining. People wanted to make trades or payments, or just make lowball offers in general. My husband wasn't having it, stuck firm on the price. He knew what that kit was worth, and he'd already moved the price down significantly. The price was right, and now we just needed to wait for the right buyer. Week or so later, I was home alone. I had the day off. I was going through my normal morning routines when I saw that I had a notification. Someone had commented on the post about the drum set. He said it looked great, it had an amazing price and would love to come take a look at it. He ended his comment by asking if he could send us a DM, to which I replied yes. I finished up what I was doing, the laundry or the dishes, something like that, then called my husband Mitchell. Hey, someone commented on your drum set, I said, does he seem serious? He asked. I can't tell yet, he just commented on it. But he's the most serious person so far. He wants to come take a look at it. What time are you going to be home? Ah, uh, don't know, Mitchell stammered through the phone. He was a site manager, and they were putting up a new building. His hours during this project could vary. I'm not really sure. So if he's wanting to see it this morning or even afternoon, and you feel comfortable, go ahead and let him come by and take a look at it. The price is firm though, this is just purely a quality check of the instrument, he explained, very clearly. Sure, sounds good. Anything special I should mention, that it's been collecting dust for ten years and may as well be brand new. I gotta go though. I love you. I love you too, I said, and then hung up. That was pretty much all I wanted to know. Make sure he was okay with the guy coming to look at it, while he wasn't here, and if there was anything special that I should say. Other than that, we lived close to our neighbors, and I knew them pretty well. Also, we had a decent amount of security within the house. A camera, a gun, that kind of thing. Robbery would be risky for anyone coming into our house, or at least, so I thought. 
I hit the guy back on the post and told him that we were good to go, to which he followed up with a DM. He said his name was Ryan, and that he was very excited about finding such a killer deal. I gave him a little background info on the drum set, and that I would be home all day if he wanted to swing by and take a look at it. Ryan said he had some other things going on, but could stop by around 1 p.m. I was just a few hours off, and it suited me perfectly. I gave him our address. I told him to hit me back on Messenger if anything changes or if he had any trouble finding the house. With that, he signed off, and I resumed whatever I was doing. Actually looked up a YouTube video and decided that I was going to clean the drum set and I wanted to know the best and safest way to do so. It really had collected a healthy layer of dust. I wanted it looking good for whenever this guy came around. If Mitchell came home and I had the thing sold, boy, he'd be happy. After I got it dusted and shined up, I went and took a shower. I still had plenty of time before Ryan was supposed to show up, but I figured I'd get some more of my own chores done before I did the showing. I hopped out and started drying off, and then I just got this weird feeling. I couldn't place it at first, but it was like there was something that I didn't recognize beyond the bathroom window. We had one of those weird fog glass windows, so you could just see blurs and colors, no real definition through the glass, but there was something bright red in our driveway. At first, I thought it was maybe a neighbor or a delivery driver. I snuck into the bedroom and got dressed, as I quietly listened for anything weird. Footsteps around the side of the house, or maybe somebody already inside. I really didn't know what to expect, so I kept my phone handy just in case. I snuck out to the kitchen and looked out the window. There was a red hashback parked in the driveway right behind my car. Okay, not the weirdest thing, but definitely unusual, just as I'm getting ready to put on my sandals and ask the neighbors if they know anything, I see something. There's a man outside the living room window, essentially standing in the front yard, nowhere near his car. I keep an eye on him, and I don't really panic at first, because he looks like, I'm not sure, maybe he's confused, lost. He looked like a little kid. It's really hard to describe. Definitely a full-grown man skulking around my property though, but the look in his eyes was that of a child. It's weird. Still, I pulled out my phone and had my husband's number ready to dial. This guy was picking around our garden, mostly the herb patch where we grew a bunch of stuff in little squares near the front of the house. He touched just about everything and started helping himself to links of rosemary and thyme handfuls of basil leaves, mint, even oregano. When he had this nice little stash, he took it back to his car and tucked it inside the console. I figured he was going to hop in the car and leave, but to my surprise, he went back to the area near the window and started fiddling with the hose. He got it unwrapped from the holder and turned the knob and then started watering the herb garden. He gave it a few spurts, then put the nozzle in his mouth and started drinking from it. He did this for like 10 minutes, no joke. After he was satisfied, he made sure the hose was untangled, then started walking over to his car. I kid you not, this man washed his entire hatchback in my driveway with that hose, with my own water. I couldn't believe what I was seeing, but I was so perplexed with what I was watching. I didn't even bother to stop him. This guy was clearly crazy, or maybe he thought he was at a different house, but either way, it was my entertainment for that afternoon. When he was done rinsing his car and having a sip, he walked the hose back over and wrapped it up on the holder, then killed the water, just as he found it. Hook, oh, some semblance of normalcy, I guess. I'll never forget watching him pull his phone out and then putz around the front yard, Facebooking or whatever the hell he was doing, like he was just at his own house. Now, I really thought this was a case of mistaken address. He must be from out of town, thought he was at his sister's house or something. Maybe he knocked while I was in the shower, and I didn't answer. 
Now he was just waiting around. But then it happened. He put the phone to his ear. Then my phone started vibrating. I was receiving a Facebook message call from Ryan, the guy who was supposed to come over in an hour or two. He was the weirdo looting my garden and helping himself to my hose. I shook my head and answered, Hello. I said, Hello. He said, Super weird start. Is everything good? We still on for later. I asked, staring right at the back of the guy's head. Yeah, yeah. I was actually going to ask, could we move up our meeting? Lunch of stuff came up later, and it'd be easier for me to come take a look rather than later. Sure. How about noon? I asked, checking the clock. That was in 20 minutes. Perfect, he said, throwing his hands in the air. I'll be there in a bit. Thank you so much. And then we both hung up. It was the weirdest thing watching this guy lie, then react to his own lies. I was really put off by the whole thing and called my husband right away. I was not very pleased when he didn't answer the first, second, or third time that I tried to call his phone. They were in the middle of putting up these massive steel warehouse buildings, and the phone service was really bad beneath all that metal paneling. Whatever the case, I don't like how everything was progressing. I'm looking down at my phone, deciding what to do if I should call the police, when I hear him knock. I look up, and there he is, peeking through the glass by the door. He gives me this creepy little wave. This was the exact kind of nightmare that I envisioned with my husband not being home. I stood there like a deer in headlights, while Ryan continued knocking on the door. To my horror, he turned the knob and just pushed it open. Mitchell hadn't locked it behind him when he left this morning for work. I couldn't believe what I just let happen and that I failed to make any kind of call to the outside for help. Hi, he said in a slow, creepy voice. Are you Erica? Yes, I said, trying not to sound shaky or scared. Are you Ryan? Yeah, sorry, I've been knocking for a little while. Didn't mean to freak you out or anything, he explained. Yeah, it's just that we agreed to meet later, at like 2 p.m. I wasn't expecting you this early, or to be poking around my garden, I said. Slow smile split across his face. Oh yeah, you saw that. Ha, huh. guess I couldn't help myself, was all he said. That was it. No other explanation about showing up early or lurking around my property. I was becoming sick at this point. So can I see that drum set? I have cash. That brought me back to the moment. I said, okay, it's right back here. Maybe this all is just a fluke. This guy is excited to get the kit for such a steal. I let him inside the rec room and the guy started going off about how pristine it was. Loved the vintage look. Loved how preserved it was, all that good stuff. This guy was on his hands and knees inspecting every little hinge on the frame. Then he starts telling me about the old band that he used to play in. How they went by the wayside after the frontman and songwriter got locked up for selling drugs. He was just a fill-in guy for a while, taking gigs as a sub for other bands on tour, or local acts around town who just needed him for one night. Got to learn a lot about genres, and what he liked to play during those years. And suddenly, I realized this guy had been talking to me for like 40 minutes, going on and on and on about his whole life story. He hadn't so much as turned an eye on the drums since he started talking, and now it was just all about him. I was getting that weird vibe again. Didn't know what to do. Ryan was making himself at home, walking from room to room, giving himself his own little tour, and complimenting everything that he found. I couldn't tell if this guy was just high or crazy. Either way, he would continuously keep giving me these creepy little glances over his shoulder. Look, I have a lot to do. I finally said, do you want to buy the drum set? That's what you're here for, right? Yes, yes, he said. The drum set, it's perfect. I want it. 
He pulled a bunch of money out of his pockets, disorganized bills, crumbled and stuffed at random. He counted out the amount that he needed and kept asking me over and over and over again what the amount was. It was a nice round number. I really couldn't figure out why he needed me to repeat it so many times. He gave me the money and then started breaking the kit down and then schlucking it out to his car. He talked the entire time like he never took a breath, continually talking about what he was going to do with his drums and the plans for his weekend. It was like this guy thought he knew me or something. After he got the drums loaded up, he actually tried to come back in our house, and thank God my husband got home around this time. Ryan's entire demeanor changed the second Mitchell's truck rolled into the driveway, like he'd been caught out or something. He went from looking like a curious kid to menacing and troubled. He didn't speak to my husband at all. He just simply said thanks, climbed into his car, and left. I never heard from Ryan again, and thankfully haven't seen him either. The whole scenario was probably nothing, but I can't shake the feeling that I dodged something scary that afternoon. In hindsight, it just seemed like he was probing, seeing how far he could take the situation before I would start to react. I misjudged everything from start to finish, and felt like a dummy for putting myself in danger. I guess if you're going to make online sales, that's just the name of the game. I used Facebook Marketplace to try to sell my car. I had an old SUV that I was trying to see what I could get for. I had recently gotten a newer vehicle. I knew that my SUV wasn't worth all that much and was just asking $3,000 for it. It ran fine, but it had a lot of miles and was older. I took some pictures and then listed it on Facebook Marketplace. Within days, I had some interest in the car. The very first person to contact me about it was a woman named Annie. She told me that she was very interested and would like to come over and take a look at the car. I told her that she could come by any time the next day because I didn't have anything going on. She suggested 8 p.m. and I agreed to it. So the next night, I got the car out of the garage and onto the driveway. Now, I live in a very quiet neighborhood with a little bit more space. My driveway is pretty long, so I put the SUV I was selling about halfway down. At 8 o'clock, a van pulled up in front of the bushes at the end of my front yard. I figured this had to be Annie. Sure enough, a woman got out that resembled the profile picture. She had blonde hair that was decently long and was wearing a black coat. She walked up to me by the car and we shook hands. Then, she began looking at the vehicle. After about five minutes, she asked if we could go for a test drive, and I agreed. She got in the driver's seat, and I got in the passengers. Then, she backed out of the driveway, and I suggested that we should just drive around the neighborhood a little bit. The roads around there were usually very quiet and pretty easy to drive on. So we left and drove around my neighborhood for a little while. The test drive went as expected. Annie asked several basic questions about the car and seemed to be genuinely interested in it. Answered her questions, and I really thought that I might be able to sell the car to her. She drove the car pretty well, and after about 15 minutes, we headed back to my house. When we got there, she pulled back into the driveway and parked the car where it had been. After we got out of the car, she gave the keys back to me and said that she would have to think about it. I understood. I was a little bit disappointed, but buying a car is a big decision, so I really wasn't that let down or anything. I told her to let me know if she wanted it, and then we shook hands again and said bye to each other. Then I went back inside of my house as Annie drove away. After getting back inside of my house, though, almost instantly, I heard something. Now, I live alone and don't have any pets, so I didn't know what on earth the noise could have been. Then I heard footsteps coming from inside. They were in the other room, as I was just inside of the living room. It sounded like it was coming from possibly the kitchen, 
and there was no doubt that somebody else was in my house with me. I called out, asking if anybody was there. Things were just silent. I yelled loudly, asking if anybody was inside my house, and said that I was calling the police if they were. After yelling that, I backed away towards my front door. I could leave the house if somebody was in here and came after me. My heart was racing, and I didn't really know what to do, because clearly somebody else was inside. Then I heard the back door to my house that goes to the patio open up. This was still out of my view, so I couldn't see anything. The door then shut, and I stayed where I was. Wasn't 100% sure that whoever was in the house had actually left. Probably 10 seconds later, as I still stood in the living room by the front door to my house, I heard a noise coming from outside and behind me. It was coming from the driveway, and I looked and saw a man sprinting down my driveway. He was running so fast, plus the sun had just set, so I couldn't get a good description of him. The only thing I could really tell was that he was a grown man in dark clothing. After he sprinted to the end of the driveway, my jaw dropped. I watched him quickly jump into the back seat of a car that had just come to a stop on the side of the road in front of my house. The car was the same van that Annie had been driving. After he got inside, the van violently screeched away. It was only then that I looked around my entire house to make sure that nobody else was there. They were gone, but I had several things stolen from me. Some cash from my bedroom, a watch, my old iPhone that I didn't use anymore, and a couple of other small things. I called the police, and they came out a short time later. I told them everything, but unfortunately, I didn't get the license plate to the van. Annie if that was even her name, blocked me on Facebook, but I gave what I could to the police. The way the intruder got in the house was my own fault. I had left my garage door open when I was gone, and the door to the house from the garage was unlocked. I felt really stupid for that. But my neighborhood is always very quiet, and my garage is so far back in the driveway, I never felt in danger if it was open. I guess the guy was in Annie's van, and when we left for the test drive, he got out and just walked right in. I learned not to invite anybody that I didn't know to my house after this. From that point forward, when I tried selling my car, I had them meet me at a local business or something. If you use any websites like Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist, I would advise you to learn from my mistake and meet in a public location if you have to meet at all. I have a terrible horror story from using Facebook Marketplace. I'm telling you, I will never use it again, and I'm still mad about it. So, this happened about two years ago. I had this really nice 50-inch TV, which had been the main TV in my living room. However, I got a new one that was 65 inches. The other one was too big for my bedroom, and I already had one in there so I decided to sell the 50-inch TV. I thought, what better place to sell a television than Facebook Marketplace? So, took a couple of pictures and then listed it. At first, I got nothing. Then, somebody lowballed me and I blocked them for making such an insulting offer. Then, somebody reasonable came along. It was a guy named Tim. Tim said that he was interested in buying the TV and asked me if it worked. I told him yes, it works just like new, which it did. He then gave me an offer, and I countered, which he accepted. I was perfectly satisfied with the amount of money that I would be getting. So we arranged a date and time for Tim to come over and buy the TV. When it arrived, he showed up to my house, and I invited him inside. I turned on the TV showing him that it worked and everything. Then, he paid me the cash, and I gave him the television. He carried it out into his car, and then he left. I was happy with the sale that I made. A couple of weeks went by, and then, out of nowhere, I got a message from Tim on Facebook. He said that the TV broke, and he wanted a full refund for it. 
Now, when I sold it to him, it had worked just fine. It was also two weeks since I had made the sale. I was a seller on Facebook Marketplace. I don't offer any kind of a warranty. I told him no. I was pretty confident that whatever happened to the TV, if anything actually happened to it, it was probably Tim's fault. Out of curiosity, I asked him what exactly happened to the TV. Tim claimed that he had no clue and said that it was just broke. He also said that I must have done something to it. He then claimed that he could sue me. I asked to see a picture. Tim sent me a picture of the TV, which had clearly been smashed. It looked like somebody had punched the screen. I asked him if he had punched it, which made him really angry. He asked me if I was going to give him a refund or not. I told him no. Told him that it's been weeks and I'm not required to offer any kind of a warranty. I reminded him how I showed him the TV worked fine just before he bought it. Tim then cursed me out and I blocked him. I couldn't believe he expected me to give him a refund. That very same night, he showed up at my house. Obviously, he knew my address from before and he banged on my door after getting there. I did not open it for him and I yelled for him to go away. He shouted back that he was not leaving without his money. He said that he brought the TV with him and he wanted to return it. I looked out the window and I saw that he did in fact have the TV with him. I said that he couldn't and that was that. Tim still wasn't leaving, so I threatened to call the police. Finally, that seemed to get him to go away. But as he was leaving, I watched him walk over to my car in the driveway and throw the TV at my windshield. He then walked away, leaving the TV on the driveway. After he left, I walked out to see if there was any damage to my car. Surprisingly, there wasn't. The windshield held up perfectly. I couldn't say the same for the TV though. It was already broken, but after it fell to the pavement of the driveway, it got even more broken. Luckily though, I never saw Tim or heard from him again after that.